All right, we are live, and it went smooth this time. This is the the Supreme Cleveland Sports Show. I'm your host, Brian Fraley, and that handsome gentleman to my right. Yeah, I got it this time. You got it right this time? All right. <laughs> yeah, if you are viewing this at home, it's uh, your right, my left. Oh, I did get it wrong. Shit, one of these days, I'm going to get it right. One of these days, I'll figure it out. I got to do this and actually <sighs> take a look at it. Anyway, the Cleveland Browns are two and two. Uh First place in the uh, AFC North, which uh, hasn't exactly been a juggernaut of a division. That's for the it's a low bar. It's a low bar. Yeah, a little bit of a low bar. So, uh, you know, things aren't as bad as they could be. But uh, I think we had a very winnable game last Sunday in Atlanta, and we let an opportunity slip through the cracks. And honestly, it's not the best time to, to let a game slip through the cracks because – We've got a really tough schedule coming up. You know, things haven't been that rough so far, but it, things only get harder as the season goes on for the Cleveland Browns. So I think collecting as many wins early on as we could, you know, was the focus for this team. So two and two, not the end of the world, but man, it would be nice to be three and one. And, you know, we're that close to being three and one. Um, but let's just jump right into the game. Um, but what are your immediate thoughts about the Browns performance last Sunday? Uh, 23 to 20 loss. <laughs> In Atlanta. This is a game they should have won. Uh, they lost in classic Browns fashion. Let's be honest here. How many times we've seen the Browns do this since they came back in 99? Uh, yeah. Be up or have a chance to win and just give up a whole bunch of points in the fourth quarter. This isn't necessarily, you know, uh, uncharted territory for anyone that's paid attention to this team for a long time. But, you know, you, you look at how it happened, the amount of time they had to prepare, they had a week and a half. To prepare yeah. they still weren't prepared i get that like they have they're missing key defensive players no Clowney, no miles garrett they had some of the worst defensive tackles in all football play if you are a fan of uh pro football focus i'm not yeah. but not no we're not. Uh, you don't you don't necessarily need to go by their numbers you can just watch them play they weren't spectacular okay no they were not spectacular at all uh the the falcons had absolutely no trouble running the ball up and down the field on this Browns defense. And then, you know, a lot of the mistakes we've seen from the secondary, the lack of communication between units, uh, I, we saw some of that again, you know, and fortunately Marcus Mariota isn't exactly a, let's be honest here. He's not a top quarterback in this league. He he's, yeah. He, he's probably a backup type player uh, to be completely honest. He completed um, seven passes, seven passes. Okay. Yeah. He did numerous sacks. This was just such a complete failure. Mm -hmm. defensively. Yeah. And, and I honestly like it is 20 points is 20 points a lot against an Atlanta Falcons team. No, maybe not. But I, I still think that it's enough to get the job done. You know, it, 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 it should have been. And when you look at this division, you know, like Baltimore scored a ton of points, but, you know, mm -hmm. we're right behind them. You know, we, we've scored more than the Bengals. We've scored more than the Steelers. Mm -hmm. Like our, our offense has not been the problem, in my personal opinion. I, I, I don't think that this loss falls on that unit really whatsoever. Uh, you know, there was a couple of mistakes made, sure. But like we we ran the ball just as effectively as they did. You know, we, we averaged five yards a carry. Uh, Chubb carried it 19 times for 118 yards uh, in a touchdown. So, you know, he did what he usually does. Kareem Hunt got it 10 times for 50 yards. Mm -hmm. So, we, you know, we ran the ball 35 times. It's not like we went from that game plan. We we played to our strengths offensively. Uh, and, you know, we were down 10 nothing, and we dug ourselves out of that hole. And the offense got us back into the game. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they deserve some credit for that, too. I, I don't think many they people – you know, not a lot of people are pointing that out. Like we were in a 10 0 hole pretty quickly in this game and it's the offense that got us back in position to win it. Um, it it's just, you know, you, you mentioned the lack of personnel on defense, but it, it's still the NFL. You still got guys on your roster that should be able to play better than this. Mm -hmm. um, Cordero Patterson, Tyler Algier, Caleb Huntley. These guys are not superstars. They're, like, they're not. They're not good players by any means. You, you, you look at who beat you. Some of the worst offensive linemen in football put together some of the best performances of the week. Uh, right. Again, I already mentioned I do not uh, subscribe to a pro football focus's uh, way of doing things, but their offensive line was given basically universal praise for how they played. They all got grades in the 90s from them. Like, yeah. Again, 
I don't care for their grades, but like if that's the way they're going to grade them, I'm not going to necessarily argue with it because of how poorly our defensive line played against them. Exactly. And, and here's the other thing, too. That like it, Anytime you give up 200 yards rushing at a clip of 5.8 yards a carry, that's not good. But it's even worse when you do it against a team who has Marcus Mariota at quarterback. Like you said, he only made seven completions in the entire game. So it's not exactly like we – we didn't know what their game plan was. We knew they were going to run the ball and we could not stop it. We knew that Mariota wasn't going to be able to beat us himself and we let him do just enough to win. And, and honestly, it, it's like you said, the defense just did not look ready. Um, and when you have a long break because we were on the Thursday night football and, and you have a week and a half to prepare, like these are things that we hoped would get cleaned up this game. And yeah. It, to be completely honest, I, I don't think we cleaned much of anything up. If anything, nothing, we nothing was cleaned up. Let's be real here. I mean, we we watched a, a team, and there's a certain expectation level of okay. They went to the last game. They had the you know the the players only meeting. They played fine, I guess. Okay, but I'm like, okay, you had the players only meeting. You have a week and a half to tighten things up. Make sure everyone's on the same page. Make sure you have a solid game plan for a very limited one-dimensional offense because no one's right. scared of that passing game. No one's scared of Mr. Seven Completions, Marcus Mariota, okay? At all. At all. And they still, they still failed. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's the most damning thing, okay? It's been year after year of the same problem that we've seen with this defense. It doesn't matter how, what they do. It doesn't matter who they have. They're going to fail in the same ways, Okay. You look at the way that uh, the Browns' defense failed in particular in this game, and it's hardly surprising. They're one of the worst fourth-quarter defenses in football. Right. Okay, They've given up 50 points in the fourth quarter this year. 50. Okay, right. And if you take out the three points they gave up to the Steelers, that's 17 to the Panthers, that's 17 to the Jets, and that's 13 to the Falcons. And, those, and say, say those teams one more time. because Panthers, Jets, Falcons. Those quarterbacks, Baker Mayfield, Joe Flacco, Marcus Mariota. Okay. Yeah, and I don't want to put the cart before the horse here, but we've got a way better quarterback coming to town next week. So, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, we're going to have to prepare for that team totally different. And, and if we don't clean some of this stuff up, like Her- Herbert is a guy that can really light this team up really quickly. And it, I, I fear He's that things get really ugly. He leads the league in passing. Yeah. You know, he, he did last year, too. I, I'm expecting him to have another banner day. You know, do you remember what happened last year? They were down against us, and they came back and beat us. Right. right. Like, it's it's not hard to, to you know, to remember why that they're, they're losing to these teams. It's their defense isn't good enough. Their scheme stinks. Okay. They – listen, I love a lot of the players on the defense. A lot of them just aren't that good. Okay, and I think it's it's beyond time to realize that. Okay, yeah, there's, there's a lot of players. names that have been around for a long time now. Like it, it, the book is not still out on these guys. Like mm-hmm. they've known who they are for a long time. A lot of the name, like a lot of the names up and down this this roster, like mm-hmm. you know, they've been around. These aren't brand new guys. Like where we're still kind of feeling them out and what their position is going to be like on this team. Like they know who these guys are, and I I think that you make a very good point when mm-hmm. when you make the same mistakes over and over again, and you keep getting the same results, you, you got to start looking at personnel, you know? And, yeah. and I think it's completely fair. And like, you look at some of the leaders in defense right now, like it's names you don't want to see leading. Like Jacob Phillips has led the team in tackling for the past two games. Like I, I get like Anthony Walker's out and someone's got to take his snaps. Okay. Right. But, but Jacob Phillips isn't good. He's not. Let's, and, let's be real here. He's just, he's just not. He's hes a guy who's going to play out his contract, then he'll go sign like with the Lions when it's over, okay? Because right. that's generally how this goes. So he'll go sign with the, the Lions or the Raiders or Jacksonville, okay? Because mm-hmm. for some reason, those four teams continuously just spin around the same players that are just mediocre talents. I mean, we have Tate and Bryan in our team. He came yep. from Jacksonville. Yeah, and what has he done? You know, he's done nothing. Okay. Absolutely he's nothing. Sticks. I hated the signing when they brought him in. He's not good enough. He's not an impact player. He just, right. he, it's, it's, it's that simple, but I have a, a very alarming stat for you. Okay. Okay. It's let's hear this. About the fourth quarter. The Browns are giving up 7.83 yards per play in the fourth quarter, which is the most 
but of any team in the NFL, the next highest is 6.61. Right. And this is the most important time of the game, you know, right down the stretch when, if anything, like this is the time when your team should be clicking, you know, like good football teams, they get better in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what really, you know, worries me moving forward is like that this is an issue we're having against lackluster opponents with, with quarterbacks that shouldn't be able to move the ball at a 7.2 yard clip or whatever mm-hmm. you said it was. 7.83. 7.8, uh, even worse. Like it, that should not be happening at all in this league, you know, let alone to Baker Mayfield and Marcus Mariota and these guys that are at the bottom of, you know, the 32 quarterbacks in this league that are starting. Mm-hmm. So it, to, to think that things are going to get better before they get worse would be kind of foolish here. Uh, I think it's time that we start looking at some of the names on, you know, up and down this roster and, you know, they've got to make some decisions going forward because, you know, we've shown even with Garrett out there and even with Clowney out there, like we're still not stopping the run, you know, like we're still having all of the same issues. And it's, it's, you know, uh, it's the same issues we've had for years. They can't stop the run, particularly up the middle. Crazy that, uh, you know, a way that, roster building that completely ignores the defensive tackle position has come back to haunt them. Okay. Right. Call me surprised. Yeah. You, I hated the fact that they got rid of Sheldon Richardson when they did. I hated when they got rid of uh, Larry Ogunjobi. I hate that they just do not value a position that is so important, but I guess big picture, big, you know, people look at, they don't understand the importance of a good defensive tackle position, not just from run defense, but in pass defense, you got to look at, creating interior pressure okay mm-hmm. if you can get the quarterback off his mark get him off his rhythm that gives your defense a better chance to make a play okay exactly if you have a weak defensive tackle spot and you have clowny you have miles garrett they're the quarterback's not moving he's just going to drop straight back and be comfortable because there's no internal pressure if you exactly. can create the internal pressure, get flush them out towards one of the others, you'll see those guys that have much increased sack numbers and quarterback hits and hurries, whatever other you know BS number you want to throw at this. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, we honestly should have got Marcus Mariota to the ground several times. And and this is and this is exactly why we're having this problem. Because even if you have great edge rushers, if you don't have somebody that's disrupting up the middle, like mm-hmm. all they've got to do is step up in the pocket. And that's what we keep seeing time and time again. These mm-hmm. guys just step up and they wiggle away and we don't get the sacks. And, and so it's like we're overvaluing one statistic and that's sacks. And, and we're not getting those even. You know what I mean? So it's like even what they're like, they're putting more value in. It, we're not executing that either. Obviously, with Garrett and Clowney in there, it's going to be a little bit different. But still, the point <laughs> remains the same. You know, it, it's I don't know. It's alarming. I mean, yeah, but it's 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 been a problem that they've had. They just continually just ship guys out. And then, yeah, we'll just we'll use Taven Bryan. Well, mm-hmm. like, we'll use Malik Jackson, Malik McDowell. Like, what are you doing? That's overconfidence in scheme, too. It, you know it, what I mean? It's overconfidence in scheme. It's overconfidence in what just a defensive end can do for you. You yeah. know, it, a couple years ago, even when they were able to like piece together a pretty good defense, I mean, they weren't didn't have any like necessarily all-star players or all pros next to Miles Garrett. I mean, they right. were playing Adrian Claiborne a good amount of snaps. Okay. Yeah. You know, they still had Larry Ogan Joby here and, and Sheldon Richardson. But the fact that those two guys were still at least baseline average to slightly above average players. Right. That allows you to have somebody like an Adrian Claiborne and have whoever just kind of do rotations on the defensive line. Right. Exactly. But the fact you have this black hole in the middle of your defense where it is just basically you're not going to create pressure from it and it's just an open running lane for opposing offenses, that creates a massive problem. And that gets you to the next issue, which is the linebacker position. I get Anthony Walker's hurt, but a lot of the linebackers in this Browns defense are undersized players because they're they're valuing speed, they're valuing agility and all the athleticism stuff. You know, you look at it because it's like, Oh, we got to be prepared for Lamar Jackson. How about the other guys on the other teams that you play that don't have Lamar Jackson? Exactly. Okay. It's right. good to have those guys, but you need the other guys too. I guess Anthony Walker did fit that, but let's look at you look at the defense. It's just it's a lot of just underwhelming talents and, and roster decisions that have been made from the you know the front office and and from I don't know how much input the coaching has on the defensive players, 
But, you know, you can see when they draft players on offense or, you know, sign them and say, okay, this makes sense because of X. I don't know where a lot of these decisions make sense because of X. Yeah, and it's not just the free agent decisions either. You know, it's draft strategy as well. Like, these are things that we have had the picks to address a lot of these issues, and they've chosen to to go elsewhere in, in a different direction. It makes absolutely zero sense. But, yeah, you mentioned that defense, you know, a, a couple years ago, and, like that defense was more productive than this one. And this one has bigger names in it than that. You know, mm-hmm. we, we've still got a pro bowl talent in Denzel Ward on this team. You mm-hmm. know, we've got Jeremiah Wosu koromoa who is quickly becoming a star in this league. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's, we have better names, you know, it, it's just not, it's not working. It's not coming together. And that has to be the preparation, the coaching. It, it, you've got to start looking at that stuff. And, and for me, we didn't bring Kevin Stefanski in here to to fix the defense, you know. No, that's not his job. His job was offense. Right. He's done that. He's succeeded. Okay. Right. And when you look at what we've done up to this point of the season offensively, I mean, this is one of the highest scoring Browns teams at this point in the season ever. So mm-hmm. so he, he's doing his job. And the offense is putting the team in position to win, even with Jacoby Brissett at quarterback. And you know, Jacoby's been great. You know, he's honestly playing better than he has for most of his career for us. But but still, he, he's not he's not a starter in this league for a reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's it's very worrisome with the, the schedule only getting tougher moving forward. Um, they need to shake some things up and make some decisions because I don't think getting Clowney and Garrett back is going to fix all of this it's, stuff. That's not going to be the that's going to be the answer. I mean, they've. Honestly, they've fallen into a, a very predictable trap that a lot of teams fall, fall into, okay? Mm-hmm. And that's spending a lot of money or acquiring a couple of big guys for big dollar figures instead of instead of maybe getting one less guy and mm-hmm. spreading that salary to boost the rest of the talent around them, right. which, which would then improve the production of the other guys. When you have when you have star players and a whole bunch of you know bums next to them or guys that just aren't good enough, you're not going to get anything. I mean, you, you remember the Lions from like 15 years ago when it was Matthew Stafford, Calvin Johnson, and Dominican Sue, three star players, but they, mm-hmm. all of their money was invested in them. They could not bring up a, a quality team around those guys because all exactly. their money was devoted to those three players. I know right. it's a little bit different with this situation, but the concept's the same. Mm-hmm. Now, I mean, you gave two hundred thirty million guaranteed to the quarterback that hasn't played yet, too. So, like, I mean, there's that, but you know, that, no, I'm not saying that's a bad move. I'm just saying, like, they have shelled out money before mm-hmm. to fix issues on this team, mm-hmm. but that's the, it's the the defensive tackle position for whatever reason they haven't been willing to go out and get a guy, and it, it's puzzling because that mm-hmm. it would fix so many issues just if you have a guy who could just just blow things up up the middle and, and cause some disruption in the backfield to okay. let other guys on this team make plays. You know, yeah. you, you really need a guy to come in and get sacks or tackles even. Just mm-hmm. just get that center pushed back, you know, get that line. You know, when these – a lot of the, like, runs we're seeing are, like, these inside zone reads against us. And mm-hmm. it's like if you've got a guy that can blow things up right off the snap, yeah, you can't, you can't execute those zone reads. And that would fix a lot of the running issues right now. So it's, it's like it's a one position fix in my eyes, it is. at least, you know, to get better. It would immediately make us a better unit if we just had one guy come in at that position. I mean, I've been banging the drum for them to, to get Indominus and Sue for months, but apparently they have no interest in Indominus and Sue, and for reasons I do not know. Okay. Sue has apparently even expressed interest with the Browns saying, hey, I'm interested. And they're like, no. And yeah. And if they're willing. Why- if they're willing to take a chance on a guy like Clowney, why not take a chance on him? I mean, I get Sue's production is is start is dipping. Okay. I get he's at an advanced age in his career. But at the same time, uh, even on a part-time basis, hasn't and played we, first and second down, then bring in someone else for third down. Yeah, we don't need all pro and dominant. No, we just need someone to bring up the talent level. Okay. Exactly. Because right now the talent level and the production they're getting is just not good enough. Okay, the thing mm-hmm. just boosted up just a little bit. It makes everyone else's job easier. Yeah, yeah. I agree. We, I think this is uh, this is probably a really good time to get to bad tweets because it, it's kind of right right in line with what with what we've been talking about. Let's so here we are. Our new segment, bad tweets, is back. I love doing this. I love getting James' reaction to these. So, all right, 
here we go to lead things off. Bring back Greg Williams at this point. That's that's the whole tweet. Bring back Greg Williams. At this okay. Point. Um, I don't know where to start. Um, apparently everyone uh, misses the days of having our safety uh, line up in center field down the street at Progressive Field. Okay, because that's how far off the ball they were playing. We don't need thirty yards of space in between our you know our safety and the line of scrimmage. That's just one thing to consider. Uh, a second thing is. There's a reason no one else has hired Greg Williams. Um, right. Uh, you know, Dr. Heat going full cover zero in a, in a game-winning situation with the other team and losing. Uh, yeah. that's, that's one of them. Another is he's just – he's not necessarily that good of a defensive coordinator. Sure, he's fiery and his defenses cause turnovers at times, but, like, mm. come on. What are yeah. we doing here? Like, no. you, you, you clamor for him now just because – you know, it's Joe Woods has been terrible. Okay. But the moment that let's say you just swap them and you get Greg Williams and you see John Johnson lining up 30 yards off, you're like, what are we doing? Why is he 30 yards downfield again? Yeah. And it creates a whole like litany of new problems, you know, because we've already got problems in the secondary. And, and if you think that that's, that's the answer, that's just ridiculous. Like, and when these teams are getting these big chunk plays against us in the fourth quarter, you think soft coverage is going to be the answer to fixing that? Like, no, it, it's so foolish. Like, it, people who say things like this, like, and I'm not saying everybody that's a fan of football has to be an expert, but like, when you when you say something like this, you're you're kind of showing your ass here and and, and, you and saying that you don't really understand defense. Yes. Um, but yeah, it, there's plenty of people. We're not at a shortage of Browns fans to come across who uh, I'll just go right into this tweet. I really, really miss Greg right now. <laughs> like, no, you don't. No, you right. don't. And like, I, again, like Greg Williams, he did his job in 2018 after they let go Hugh Jackson. That was to just maintain the ship. Sure, I love the commercial of him in the, you know, for the car dealership where he's yelling, come get some bitch in the car that they had to, you know, bleep out so it could actually air. That was fun, Okay. Yeah. But at the same time, we knew that he was not the long-term solution to their problems. He knew it. He was just the guy who was like, okay, don't let it explode on you. And that was it. Exactly. He, he better than you. He was. Don't let everything explode. And that's yeah. what he did. But yeah. he was never a real solution. Just because he's all fiery and all this other crap, that stuff gets old quick. It's not NFL crap. Okay. There's a reason, another reason why he's bounced around as much as he has. Yeah, you know who we don't see. You know who we don't see do stuff like that ever. Like not even once. Bill Belichick. Like, yep. The, the coaches who are that animated and and in my eyes overcompensate mm -hmm. for their it's 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 insecurity with their ability to coach at a high level, and so yeah. they they just like they they think if they bring this fire and this energy that that makes them more valuable. And and to me, it's like. I don't know the guys that I see in the league right now that are running good defenses. Like they're not guys like Greg Williams. They're not running up and down and, and doing all this crazy stuff on the sideline like he was. And it's like, if you want that cool, but like, that's not going to fix this team. And, and what are we doing? Really? We're just kicking the can further down the road with this concept of like, just get rid of the coach and bring in another one. Like mm -hmm. we still have the same personnel on the field. Yeah, we still don't have a deep, you know, we still issues. Uh, honestly, they need a scheme overhaul. Okay. Because what I, what I don't think a lot of people understand about this scheme it, in Joe Woods is that it worked well in San Francisco where they have a defense that has first round picks everywhere on it. Everywhere. Right? That, that it's so much talent on that defense, even with Nick Bones of Glass Bosa on their defensive line. Okay. They still have a really good defense, and that's why it worked. Okay, mm -hmm. the Browns don't have that. They don't. I mean, sure, Miles Garrett's awesome. Denzel Ward, really good. Clowney, he was a first round pick, I guess. Okay, but the talent levels are not the same. And if you don't have that same elite talent level across the board, this defense simply isn't going to work. Right. It, it hasn't, uh, and mm -hmm. that's that's really the, the the big issue, or you know, the big shortcomings of this defense is that they don't have the talent to run what they ran in San Francisco, and. This is one of the things that I'm always cautious about, the guys that teach scheme, 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 and not I'm going to coach defense and adjust to the players, adjust right. to the talent, adjust to their strengths and weaknesses. 
this guy's just out here preaching scheme, and, and that's it. That's all we see is scheme, scheme, scheme. I, yeah, you know, we see the same stuff week in, week out. We're not seeing anything new. We're not seeing him like adjust anything to these guys. It's the same well, yeah, problem. It is the same problem, and and it's usually the same players repeating the same mistakes too. Mm-hmm. And that's a that's again why it makes me think like this could really just be more a personnel issue than anything. Like we just don't have the players to execute the scheme the way they want to do it. And when you, when you can see that plain as day this far into a season, that's when you really need to go to practice and say, Hey, like, yeah, let's redesign this to our players ability, you know, Mm -hmm. because these guys just can't, they can't execute the defense the way that we're coaching it right now. So Mm -hmm. I'm hoping we make some adjustments because Mm -hmm. we're going to have to play a different style of ball against the chargers than, you know, we did against the Falcons. Yeah, and not to get too far into the weeds here, speaking about defense and schemes and stuff, but, uh, you know, Denzel Ward, just for example, coming out of college, his first couple years in the league, he was known for elite man defense. We run zone defense. Yep, and you put him, like you said, 30 yards off the ball, like off of his guy, and it it just doesn't make any sense. Like, you got to use your weapons in the best way, you know, to get the most out of them. And it that's what separates. Time. I mean, you remember when Darrell Rivas went to Tampa and he mm. sucked? Yeah. It's because they ran zone. Right. And he ran man in New York. Yeah. it's it, There's players that are zone players and there's players that are man players. It and that, all the time. Uh, that's, I mean, something happened uh, reverse with D'Angelo Hall back in the day mm. where he played for Washington. He was a zone player. He played for Oakland. They played man. And he was terrible. Right. That's yeah, you're hard. absolutely right. Speaking of Oakland, Nandi Asamoah went from Oakland, man, went to Philly zone, was terrible. Right. Especially for, for cornerbacks, like it, it makes all the difference in the world. And that's why you have such a deep roster. Like you're allowed to carry so many players at that position mm-hmm. because there are certain guys that like they're not on the field in certain play packages. Mm-hmm. And that's for that reason. And, and you don't have the personnel. We just, you know, the team's not deep enough to, to be able to shuffle guys in and out and, you know, have a guy that, okay, you know, he can play zone. If we want to drop into zone, let's put him out there. Like we don't necessarily have, uh, you know, people who are multifaceted on the roster. Yeah. Like more, just more, a good zone corner still, but he's much better at man. And I think that's important to, to, you know, recognize here. Yeah. And it's yeah. also, they just need to do some sort of combo coverage. Honestly, I don't know why they're just. It seems they're not. It doesn't seem like doing enough of it mm-hmm. to me. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think that's ultimately you know the shortcoming here. Uh, but uh, I believe he has some more bad tweets. Uh, let's see what we got here. <laughs> okay, let's see. There's a couple more. I'm not finding them. Give me a minute. Oh, 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 oh! Got it. Ah, yeah. Okay. Ooh, this is a great one. The defense did enough to win this game. No, they didn't. I mean, I, I they, they didn't. Uh, if they did enough to win this game, they would have won the game. Okay. What what this is is someone who is too much in love with the scheme and Joe Woods and doesn't really understand enough about how things work when it comes to football that decided to tweet this out. Okay. Because they did not do enough to win this game. Okay. I understand they're shorthanded, but they did not do enough to win this game. Mm-hmm. It, it's, just, it's it's to say that is I don't know what this is honestly I'm trying to determine where this person was going with this because this is just such an awful bad take on this. Do you still have those fourth quarter numbers handy? Oh oh the, oh, the ones where they've given up 50 points in the fourth quarter or the 7.82 yards per play in the fourth quarter or the 13 points to Marcus Mariota and the Falcons. Tell those me ones. that yeah I, I would I would ask him to show me in any of those games where the defense did enough to win the game. Because uh, yeah, how about when the, the, the Falcons ran the ball ten times in a row? Okay. Yeah, and how about Marcus Mariota only completes seven passes, but he's got 139 yards. Like he's you know, he's getting seven point three yards. That's an absurd per- average, by the way. Let's let's be honest here. Seven completions and he gets, you know, twenty yards per completion. Yeah, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. And so yeah, yeah, tell me the defense did enough. I, I definitely don't buy that one. Let's see here. Okay, this one says duh, 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 duh. they aren't pushing their chips into the middle until the next season and several following. So this one basically speculating that we're not we're not going for it this year. Is that the, the so, drift I'm getting? This is 
I, I love speculation, okay, especially from people that have shown time and time again they have no idea what they're talking about. So that's my favorite, okay? But they didn't push their chips in. If they weren't pushing their chips in, they wouldn't have brought back Jadavian Clowney, yeah. okay? They, they wouldn't have made the decision to acquire Amari Cooper, who most people have widely accepted isn't going to be here next year, okay? Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have made the decision to do all of the things that they did this offseason. Yeah, I'd even argue that – <laughs> I'd even argue that we wouldn't have seen Miles Garrett at practice yesterday if they weren't all in. They were pushing their chips in. Miles Garrett would not be returning to play this week. Okay, that's what I mean. You that's know, exactly Jadavion what I mean. Clowney wouldn't be pushing to play this week. He's trying to try to play this week, apparently. But right. you wouldn't see. You know, they wouldn't have brought back Anthony Walker if they were if they weren't pushing their chips. And this would have been another developmental play. The young guys, draft picks, surplus of picks, multiple guys trying hit on quantity, not quality type of seasons. That's not what right. they're doing. Right. That's not yeah. what they're doing. They, they they brought in guys that cost a lot of money, that cost capital to acquire, and a lot of them more than likely aren't going to be here next year. I would call that pushing your chips in, even though they knew that there was an uncertain amount of time that their new franchise quarterback wouldn't be playing. And not only that, but like – do you not think that like all of the Browns coaching staff is not looking at this division and going, man, we're, <laughs> we are lucky to be in this one. You know what I mean? Like we, we've got a chance to win this division mm -hmm. just off of the fact that like none of the teams are all that great. No, so, like, the division's not good right now. Like this is a, t this is a year that you have to go for it. Mm -hmm. You 100% have to go for it because you might never get a chance to, to win a division like this one, you know, like we have this year is what mm -hmm. I'm getting at. Like the I mean, Burrow's only going to continue to get better. The Bengals have shown that they're, you know, going to continue to try to bring pieces in and grow. They haven't been great to start the year, but still down the road, they're going to be a team. Uh, I've got all the faith in the world that Mike Tomlin's going to figure it out in Pittsburgh eventually. You know, mm -hmm. I don't expect them to stay down for long. Um, so, yeah, like the, this is a year that you're absolutely going for it. Even if Deshaun Watson was, you know, suspended for the year, I still think that this was a year that they were going to go for it. Yeah, so. I mean, this isn't one of those Sashi Brown BS years where they're just like, we're going to try and hit on as many guys as possible with as many trades. That's not what we're, what we're doing. I still right. know that, you know, that fraud buddy of his that, you know, works remotely still involved in the organization. OK, I don't know what the hell he does. He's like the, the one guy from office space where they say, what is it? that you do here and he doesn't say anything that's who he is okay it's like, it's like creed bratton when he when, <laughs> when he when he like learned his job responsibilities and he'd been there for like 15 years he's like oh okay uh, uh, that or you know when he met holly he's like what does it do here excuse me and just kind of uh, like, yeah uh, like, uh, quality 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 <laughs> not it. I'm close it was something along those lines. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've got one more and then that's going to close us out for bad tweets. And this okay. is a doozy. Uh, this says Kevin Stefanski's play calling is less than average. Kevin Stefanski's play calling is the only thing keeping the Browns in games. Uh, whether you want to just use the old fashioned eye test, you want to look at the points or yards that they're putting up, or you want to look at like efficiency numbers. The Browns across the board are, are outstanding. Like, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Sure, you have problems with some of the play calls, like the end around to David Njoku. Sure, I sure. hated that play. Okay. Uh, running a, 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 like a stretch play on the goal line with Nick Chubb instead of up the middle or a toss if you're going to go outside. Also, not a great play. It happens. Right. But if right. you look at the overwhelming amount of his decisions that he makes in regards to play calling, key were in regards to play calling there, yeah. um, are, are, are really good. <laughs> yeah. And in the first, like the first couple of weeks of the season too, like our opening drives looked phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So when we talked about like the lack of preparation, uh, I don't think we're seeing that from Stefanski in the offensive unit. It seems yeah. like they're coming out and they're, they're getting into their groove immediately. Whereas the defense is like going through this feeling out process in every game. Mm -hmm. And then in the fourth quarter comes around when you think they're start, like finally starting to click, they just completely collapse. Mm -hmm. And it, so even though we're two and two and we're in first place right now, uh, this really does feel like a little bit of a house of cards. And and to me, it's all 100% on this defensive unit. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really happy with the offense. And then like people saying like, oh, they should have ran the ball more. Like we ran the ball 35 times. 
Yeah. And we, and we, we ran it effectively too. So you don't, you know, you're not job on the, on the final drive when you have to get the field goal range and you start off in not field goal range. Like yeah. The, the people that thought that you should go up the middle there, like you're just silly. That's, that's, that's just silly. Not, it's not realistic. That's not right. a, you know, it's not the way that football works. You know, there's yeah. this thing that's called a, a game clock. And, you know, when you snap the ball, the time goes down. And when it gets to zero, the game's over. Okay? Yeah. Running the ball makes that clock go faster. And you don't yeah. want that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I Play calling has been great, in my opinion. There's been a couple questionable calls. But, like like you said, the overwhelming totality of work that we have from, Ste- or from Kevin Stefanski mm-hmm. is really good so far this season. And, and you look up and down the offensive categories for the Browns and where they rank league wide, they're one of the better teams. So yeah. what are we doing here? What the, the, the fact that, that people are going to criticize Kevin Stefanski, who is doing literally quite exactly what we brought him here to do. Yeah. He, he has an offense that is playing at a very high level. Like again, this is the same offense that a, a year ago we saw not do anything. Okay. Right. Yeah, you know, I would say Jacoby Brissett's performance numbers wise and what he's been able to basically accomplish is better than the best season we saw out of Baker Mayfield. OK, and, and most Jacoby's been really good this year. Brissett did this off the jump. It didn't take him half a season for him to, you know, learn and get better with a dumbed down playbook that was cut in half. Right. Okay. And we don't see him playing the blame game at all following any of these losses. We don't see him saying, you know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. those are things that we saw from Baker every loss. Uh-huh. It was like every time this team lost, it was like, oh, God, what's he going to say after the game? Who who on the team is he going to piss off? You know, and it, by all accounts, like Jacoby's been a great leader and, and his numbers like he's playing as good as I think he's capable of playing. Like he didn't have a perfect game last week, but, you know, he only had the one interception and the one sack like he. Yeah, he still like, had relatively good numbers, you know, 21 for 35 and seven yards per attempt. It's pretty good. Yeah. So there, there are two plays or two things I want to ask about you or, or discuss real quick before we get to the Chargers game. Sure. Okay. Um, the decision to go on, go for it on fourth down in the, in the first quarter. I've been going back and forth of trying to figure out where I stand on this. I'm just curious of where you stand on it. Uh, let's see. The, the, the first, first quarter, quarter of the Atlanta game. Let's see. I'm pulling yeah. up the plays right now. They go for it on fourth and goal. They don't get it. Jacoby throws it out of the end zone. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that one. I don't, sure I, I, on it. It. I don't know where I stand on it either. Uh, it, I understand, like, with a team like Atlanta, like, you, you want to show confidence and you want to mm-hmm. go for it. And But, yeah, that, that one's a questionable one, especially, like, when you look at how the first quarter played out. Like, we, mm-hmm. we lost that quarter 10 to nothing. Like, yeah, it, things didn't go great early on for, for the Browns offense. And, yeah, I would argue that, that that decision right there had a big reason to do with the hole that we dug ourselves in. It did. Like, I, on one hand, uh, I look at it, it'd be nice to get some points in the first drive. On the yeah, right, right? exactly. Right. Which is, is the main argument I think a lot of people have for kicking the field goal. On the other hand, as we saw throughout this game, uh, Stefanski knew he had zero faith in his defense and what was going to happen. So he that's knew the that problem. in this game that he's got to put up sevens and not threes. And so that's, that's what I'm like. I understand his, his reasoning that it didn't work. Yeah. But I think so- the, the traditional thing to do is, is you're always going to take points on your first drive. But mm-hmm. I think considering the circumstances and how poorly the defense has played, I understood the call to go for it. Yeah. But do, do I like the play call? No. I mean, I hate that play call, but I, I don't have as much of a problem going for it as I do with the play call itself. That, that's where I'm at on both of those. Uh, yeah. Moments decisions the, there's so uh, many like better if, players if there was a little bit more faith in the defense or if there mm-hmm. was just you know if Clowney and Garrett were playing I think they might have took the three honestly sure yeah uh, I, I, know I, he's agree. One, I understand he's one of the more aggressive coaches and they go for it more than pretty much anybody except for maybe like the Chargers yeah. okay yeah. um but I, I think if there's a little bit more faith in the defense to get a stop and get the ball back then they yeah. could have been up yeah. maybe 10 to nothing instead of down 10 to nothing the right. other thing I wanted to ask was on, on the final drive where Jacoby threw the interception. Yes. You know, there was there was the open uh there was the nice open, easy throw across the middle, right? There was. But he threw it deep. So in my mind, I've I've watched the play a thousand times, and you know, I'm what I'm thinking is that the directive to Jacoby probably wasn't let's get in the field goal range. It was probably let's go win this game. 
That's the I, only reason I would understand why him throwing it deep instead of taking the short check down is we're going to go down and we're going to score a touchdown and win this game. We're not going to play for overtime. I, I think that that was the thought exactly. Uh, I think <laughs> that the defense was dreadful for most of the game and they didn't want to send this thing into overtime. I think mm-hmm. that the, the game plan on that drive was always to get into the end zone. And yeah. I think that's why we saw what, it, what we saw. Jacoby has shown that like he's smart and he's, he protects the ball very well. I, mm-hmm. I, I refuse to believe that in that situation, that late in the game, he pushed the ball down the field like that without it being a directive. Like, hey, yeah. we, we need to move the ball down the field. We need to try to score a touchdown here. Because, you know, we don't have Garrett. We don't have Clowney. Like, th- this unit hasn't shown that they can keep things together in this fourth quarter. You know, look how many points we gave up in the fourth quarter. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it made complete sense that he, he tries to push it down the field. And it's easy to play Monday morning quarterback and say, yeah, well, if he dumps it off, you still get 15 to 20 yards. And you can yeah. still try to score a touchdown. Sure. But, you know, that completion, the clock runs, you know. Mm-hmm. So, it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean – we would have won the game or we would have put us in field goal range. So I don't know that that's just the kind of money Monday morning quarterback stuff that I try to stay away from. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Let's, let's talk chargers. Yeah, let's do that. This is, this is going to be a, it's going to be an adventure on Sunday. Um, I have no doubt that the Browns offense will be able to score points. Correct. My Correct. concern is how many points is the defense going to give up? That's the worry. Because Justin Herbert is really good. Um, the Chargers offense is really good. They're an aggressive offense, as we saw last year when we played the Chargers. And, you know, um, this is one of those days where I'm I'm kind of happy I have Mike Williams on my fantasy team because he's going to have himself a day, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, and, and I think an- another problem that we've had, obviously, is, you know, stopping the run. So yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they hand the ball off a little more than usual. But yeah, Justin Herbert is a stud. Um, in my opinion, he's going to be a top three quarterback in this league for a long time. Like, yeah. I, I, I think he's elite. I think he is a tier one guy. Um, so that, you know, there, we obviously know what we're going to get from him. We know that he's going to throw the ball down the field. We know that we've had problems in the secondary with communication and, you know, guys not being on the same page. So, so you know, we're going to see them push the ball down the field. In, in my opinion, the, the one thing that we really need to try to do in this game is just just clean up those chunk running plays up the mm-hmm. middle and, and really just try to create pressure. Because um, if we can get some pressure and keep him off, you know, off balance a little bit, we have guys like Denzel Ward who has shown that, like, He'll go out there and he'll make a play, you know, mm-hmm. and that's what it's going to take. It's going to take somebody on this defense that hasn't, hasn't really done something yet to make a play happen because they're going to score a lot of points. I don't see any reason why if they scored 30 against, you know, it, it was 34 against the Texans, like mm-hmm. looking at our defense and looking at the Texans defense, it's not all that different with, without Garrett and Clowney. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they're going to score a lot of points. It's uh we're going to have to make some plays. I, I, I think that this – I like the over in this game. I think both teams are, are probably going to score a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think that there's going to be particularly good defense played at all. And that's, that's why my, my mindset is just make a play. You know, someone go out there and make a play. Put Denzel Ward in positions, you know, put him in man coverage against these guys. Let him, you know, go out there and make a play. Hopefully in the fourth quarter we don't completely fall apart. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, you know, Eckler's a guy that they haven't got much out of him yet, but he could explode, you know, at any mm-hmm. moment. So yeah, I, I think if we could just eliminate the run game, try to create some pressure, uh, we'll have a chance. But mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Before the season started, I had this one circled as a loss and, and I did too. I, I don't feel confident about this game at all. So I don't either. Uh here's what you gotta hope for. Um you gotta have a player to go the Browns way. You got to hope the Chargers charger and that the 1 p.m. Chargers are a real thing. Okay. Yeah. Where it, it's what you got to hope for. You got to hope for the Chargers just to, to do that thing where they just suck for a week. And you got to hope for that to be part of the playing on the East Coast. Because East Coast, I don't, I don't know what it is. Like East Coast Chargers just, they're not good. Yeah. It, it, this is like a historical thing. They're just not good. So, like, I, I know there's like, it's not the, uh, you know, 
hundred percent, but it's it's pretty accurate most of the time. East Coast Chargers is just it doesn't work. Yeah, it's a tough journey for them just with the time zone change alone. Like that, yeah. that's hard on athletes. Like these guys are so heavily dependent on routine and whatnot. And so that alone makes it difficult. And then you add in the weather on the East Coast as opposed to the weather on the West Coast. Like obviously it's a whole different ball game out here. So I, honestly, I think that if we could root for one thing in this game, it, it would be bad weather. I think bad weather would give us a really good shot to win this game. You but know, uh, that that would help bad weather a little bit. Uh, just I, I I don't know what the you gotta hope for just some magic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chubb's gonna have to have a monster game. That that running game's gonna have to be clicking, and yeah, just try to limit mistake. Can't turn the ball over against this team. Um, but I have got a bunch of stuff going on. So uh, if we could just give our final thoughts for the day, we're going to end things a little early this week. Um, you're, so we're both calling this one a loss. I'm not, I don't care to make a score prediction. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, this is one of those circumstances where we hope that we're wrong yeah. and, you know, we'll be happy to come back next week and uh, talk about the win and, and what we did right and where we were wrong if that happens. But yeah, it's uh, things aren't looking good defensively for the Browns right now, and that has me worried. I mean, uh, my my final thought here is I, I have a prediction, and it's going to be we're going to be talking about Joe Woods next week again. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, it, do you think that? Uh, let me just ask you this: Do you think there's a chance he loses his job this year? There should be, but will there be? Probably not. Um, the wheels are really going to have to fall off the bus for that to happen. I, I don't know what it's going to take. Okay. Cause the, Joe Woods has shown time after time. He's just not capable of doing this job adequately. Mm -hmm. And he's still here. Like, yeah. so, uh, I, I think if there's a change made at any point, it's going to be after the season. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not necessarily positive that an in season change will happen. Just, yeah. I just, I don't know. I mean, uh, defensive changes aren't quite like offensive changes. I mean, it's, the, the difference you'll see is in this is I guess uh, unless big. you're going from like a three four to a four three I get what you're saying you know yeah, you, you don't have to come in and install a brand new scheme like it, there are subtle adjustments that could be made so mm -hmm. it's a little bit different but yeah I I, I just want to say like I have more confidence in Kevin Stefanski after four games this year than I did last year because I didn't know what what we would look like with Baker gone. Because mm -hmm. uh, let's be honest, he was so bad that like it, we didn't really get a good picture of what Stefanski's offense looks like when it's clicking. And mm -hmm. you know, we've seen it with Jacoby. Like we've seen these moments where like this this thing really, when they're clicking, like this offense really fires on all cylinders, and they move the ball up and down the field great and eat up a lot of clock. And you know, that's the reason that we're still here at two and two and not talking about no one fourteen. So, yeah, it, it, chill on Stefanski. I think he's doing a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, let's start putting pressure on the right people. And as of right now, it looks like Joe Woods deserves most of the blame. So It, it does. He, he does. And, like, if you're going to criticize Kevin Stefanski, there are there are areas to do so. Uh, you know, it, maybe he's not the best manager of the personalities on the team. Maybe right. he's not the best manager of, of in-game decisions, okay? But when it comes to play calling, when it comes to scheme, you can just stop because there, there's no criticizing that. It's we've seen it's been really good, and like yeah. even the the upgrade from Baker to Brissett. Funny that people were saying that's not an upgrade in the off season. It's been uh, an upgrade. It was an upgrade, and I, I I pretty much said at the time Jacoby Brissett is better than Baker Mayfield, and mm. you know people were like, no, he's not. Like, yeah, he is. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he is. Um, we've seen it, but even just that little increase in, in the little upgrade at the quarterback position, you're seeing more stuff. You're seeing some yeah. more concepts. You're seeing some more things that you haven't seen yet because the other guy couldn't do it. Jacoby can. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see what this team's going to look like with Deshaun Watson in there because they look really good so far with Jacoby. And he's a guy that, you know, we're getting as much out of him as you could possibly expect. So, like, we can't hope for much more than him mm -hmm. for, than what he's done so far. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for this week. Um, we will probably be back midweek at some time. Hopefully it'll be, you know, our normal Thursday at noon, but it might not be. Um, so yeah, make sure you like this video, subscribe, do all that stuff so that when we go live next week, um, you guys can catch us. So thanks a lot for joining us. And James, I will see you next week. See you next week. Go Browns. <laughs>